From health care to immigration and national security, Democratic contenders defended their ambitious plans for the United States. This as the first Democratic debate of the 2020 presidential campaign kick-started. It could be a make-or-break moment for many contenders as they struggle to be noticed in a crowded Democratic field of more than 20 candidates. They are battling for the right to face Donald Trump in the 2020 election. Now, all 10 participants in the first encounter had an opportunity to step out of the shadow cast by front runners uh, Joe Biden and uh, Bernie Sanders. It took a little bit of warm up, but candidates began heating up the debate with jabs at one another over immigration and national security. It's been far too long that the monopolies have been making the campaign contributions, have been funding the super PACs, have been out there making sure that their influence is heard and felt in every single decision that gets made in Washington. Where I want to start this is I want to return government to the people, and that means calling out the names of the monopolists and saying I have the courage to go after them. A new democracy that is revived because we return power to the people. No PACs, no gerrymandering, automatic and same-day voter registration to bring in more voters, and a new Voting Rights Act to get rid of the barriers Congress that are in place now. Work. That's how we each have a voice in our democracy and make Congress this economy work. work for everybody. Mr. President, I will take your hard-earned taxpayer dollars and instead invest those dollars into serving your needs. Things like health care, a green economy, good-paying jobs, protecting our environment. Meanwhile, Donald Trump, who was watching the debate on television, though, uh, thought it was rather boring. The U.S. president also suggested that he might offer some tweeted responses to what he hears from the Democratic candidates. I think they're all going to do very poorly. So we have a big debate going on, just started, and I had my choice between you and them, and I chose you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Get those pictures. Get those. Uh, thank you, everybody. I chose you over the uh, debaters. You're smarter. You're smarter than they are. Better looking. On to Libya now. The internationally recognized government there has said that they have retaken the town Gharian following clashes with the insurgent forces. According to reports, dozens of pro Haftar fighters have been killed in the attack. However, General Khalifa Haftar or his LNA have not yet confirmed the loss. General Khalifa Haftar's fighters have held Gharian since April 2nd when it launched a rapid advance against the capital from the south and east. Libya has been torn by violence and division since longtime ruler Muammar Gaddafi was deposed and killed in 2011. Since early this year, dozens have died since the LNA began its campaign earlier this year against the UN-backed government led by Prime Minister Fayez al sarah Gharian is the main forward base for Haftar's Libya National Army, which have been fighting to take control of the capital Tripoli. In a statement, the Tripoli-based Presidential Council said, and I'm quoting, Gharian has been fully liberated.